morning everyone welcome to morning prayer for thursday this begins on page 407. this is the message we have heard from christ glory to god father son and holy spirit let's say together the opening canticle a song of god's herald Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And so, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. There are three psalms set for today, Psalms 121, 122 and 123. And this begins on page 360 in your prayer books, page 360. Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills but where shall I find help? My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to stumble and he who watches over you will not sleep. Be sure he who has charge of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is your keeper. The Lord is your defense upon your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor shall the moon by night. The Lord will defend you from all evil. It is he who will guard your life. The Lord will defend your going out and your coming in from this time forward forevermore. Psalm 122 I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is built as a city, where the pilgrims gather in unity. There the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as he commanded Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. O oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. Peace be within your walls prosperity in your palaces for the sake of my kindred and companions I will pray that peace be with you for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek for your good and now Psalm 123 to you I lift up my eyes you who are enthroned in the heavens 
the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master? Or does the eyes of a maid toward the hand of her mistress? So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have had our fill of derision. Our souls overflow with the mockery of those at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from the second book of Kings, verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 1, sorry, second book of Kings, chapter 7, uh, verses 3 to 20. Let's try and separate these pages, because have a page turn. There we go. Now there were four leprous men outside the city gate who said to one another, why should we sit here until we die? If we say, let us enter the city, the famine is in the city and we shall die there. But if we sit here, we shall also die. Therefore, let us desert to the, to the Aramean camp. If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the Aramean camp. But when they came to the edge of the Aramean camp, there was no one there at all. For the Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the sound of chariots and of horses, the sound of a great army. So that they said to one another, The king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to fight against us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses and their donkeys, leaving the camp just as it was, and they fled for their lives. When these leprous men had come to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent, ate and drank, carried off silver, gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Then they came back, entered another tent, carried off things from it, and went and hid them. And they said to one another, what are we doing? What we are doing is wrong. This is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning, we will be found guilty. Therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the, gate, uh, to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, We went to the Aramean camp, but there was no one to be seen or heard there, nothing but horses tied and donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. The gatekeepers called out and proclaimed it to the king's household. The king got up in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you that the Arameans have prepared what the Arameans have prepared against us. They know that we are starving, so they have left the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. One of the servants said, let some of the men take five of the remaining horses, since those left here will suffer the fate of the whole multitude of Israel and that have perished already. Let us send and find out. So they took two mounted men. The king set them, sent them after the Aramean army, saying, Go and find out. So they went after them as far as the Jordan. The whole way was littered with garments and equipment that the Arameans had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Arameans. So a measure of choice meal was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. 
The people trampled him to death at the gate, just as the man of God had said. The king came down to the people trampled him to death in the gate, just as the man of God had said when the king came down to him. For when the man of God had said to the king, Two measures of barley shall be sold for a shekel, and a measure of choice meal for a shekel, about this time tomorrow in the gate of Samaria. The captain had answered the man of God, Even if the Lord were to make windows in the sky, could such a thing happen? And he had answered, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat from it. It did indeed happen to him. The people trampled him to death in the gate. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The second reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 13 to 28. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told the disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? And what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. say together the canticle, the hymn of the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of, bl not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We collect prayer for this week. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we pray today for our leaders, those who lead us um, in our church and in our community, that they will have courage to risk calling us to greater things which we can achieve with his power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find it impossible to cope with the stress of life. We pray that they may be led to discover the freedom and peace of a simpler lifestyle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for other members of the great family of the church, that they may discover with us the power, powerful unity that we share through one faith and one baptism. So in this we pray for all the other churches of all denominations throughout this area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our bishops, particularly for our Archbishop Philip and our Bishop Kate, that they may lead us to tackle the major burning issues of our time. We pray that we may never become isolated from the real concerns that exist around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all people of goodwill who are dedicated to removing discrimination between peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church family of all saints, for everyone connected with our church. In our cycle of prayer, we pray today for Janet and John Nelson, David North, Paul O'Connor, and for Angela Pollard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wider church. Today, in our cycle of prayer, we're asked to pray for the Diocese of Newcastle, for Bishop Peter Stewart and Assistant Bishops Charlie Murray, Sonia Royalston, and for all the clergy and people of that diocese. We pray for examining chaplains, Gail Pinchbeck, Lindsay Irwin, Turi Hollis, Nolene Horton, Chris Appleby, Peter Martin, Jan Eustra, Dawn Trelaw, Victor Yu, Robert Vun, Jane Fremantle, Yvonne Poon, Heather Schna Schnagel, Michael Flynn. And we pray for the Anglican parish of Chelsea, for its priest, Sue Blurt, and for all the people of that parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Morning Collect. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. 
Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all that we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will, and may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen.